Thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can move my agenda. I can never. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I can see everybody and still see the agenda. Um, so the meeting's called to order at 505. Um, quick roll call. We have Carol Bruce, Joe Fletcher, Katie Sullivan, Betty Standish, Judy Keene, Amy Widorf, and Chris Trazik. Um, and do we have the, did you, Denise, did you send the minutes out for January? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. And didn't we need November's as well? Um, yes, we didn't vote on them the last time. I'm just looking at that right now. Um, only because I don't want it to get too far away and we'll you know, be in June at that to November's. <laughs> Did you send out the agenda in the minutes uh, with the Zoom? Yes, they're attached to that same invitation link. Today's oh. invitation, the updated? They're both, yes, they're both on there. And there's a few other supplemental um, items. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, uh, so can we have a motion to approve the minutes of the January 2022 meeting? I move to approve the minutes. Thank you, Kate. Do we have a second? We got sure. a minute or two to read through them. I'll second it. Thanks, Betty. <clears throat> All right, any edits, comments, additions, corrections? Where's my school teacher? <laughs> Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, we're going to do a little bit out of order because Jill and Amy need to leave early, so I want them to be able to do a quick update, uh, very quick, and then we'll go into anything that needs a decision before they have to leave. So, um, Amy, Jill, take it away. Well, we have uh, so many things going on this winter. Um, tonight is our uh, continuation of our maritime lecture series. Um, our program is on the Amistad um, and uh, the soup supper for our members starts at 5.30 and um, the lecture is at seven. Um, uh, going into next month on the third, we have um, a program in collaboration with the Academy of the Arts on maritime art. And Betty can tell you more about that uh, when you get to her. Um, we also have the Jolly Beggars on, I'm sure I get the right date. Sorry, my dog always decides to make noise when I'm talking. Um, on March 22nd, we have the Jolly Beggars. And on the 29th of March, we have Jonathan James Perry speaking about Native American mariners. Um, and then going into April, um, we have an exciting event in collaboration with the library and the schools. Um, Jill can tell you more in detail about that having to do with the play Our Town. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you've all, if you're all familiar with Thornton Wilder's play Our Town, but it's a real slice of life and it takes place in a community a lot like Wethersfield. Um, it's a very, um, it's very simple in the, in the story, but it talks about big issues, life and death, our place in the universe, and really what it means to call a place home. Um, with Weathersfield Library, we're doing a collaboration where they will be um, showing a film version of Our Town, the Hal Holbrook version from 1977. 
There's a possibility they'll be showing a more um, recent, a documentary on a recent production put on by some urban youth. Um, that's very interesting, but they're still working on the rights. And they'll be holding a, um, a, a lead book discussion like a regular book club in this initiative that's Weathersfield Reads. So it's a town read. Everyone in town is invited to read both Thornton Wilder's play, Our Town, and are invited to read our event on um, April 5th, which will be, uh, I'll send this around when it's done. It's almost done, but it's um, going to be a conversation about with a theater expert. Um, Howard Sherman has worked at Hartford Stage and now he does all this writing for London. He's an expert on um, the, um, censorship in the arts and all kinds of things. Howard will be our speaker on April 5th. He'll be interviewed by another author from Connecticut, um, Chris Knopf, talking about different stagings of the play um, throughout the United States, anywhere from theater of the deaf to a prison environment and all kinds of things. So it's a real exciting conversation. It's, it's entitled Our Town Talks About Our Town. You're all invited in, to participate in the full program throughout the month of March and then come to the culminating event on April 5th. Okay. Great. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Um, so I'm just keeping an eye on the time and knowing that they have to leave. Is everyone okay if we jump to new business and add placement? So in case we make a decision and we need a vote, we have enough people here. Yes. Okay, so um, included in the stuff that Denise had sent around, um, <clears throat> we are in the month of March already and our budget year ends um, and we have to have everything, I'm sorry, I always forget the word, allocated, committed by end of April, beginning of May, Denise? When we have to have our budget items committed, right? Yes. Okay, so we really need to make a decision sooner rather than later. Um, so I did not necessarily find out praising for Better Connecticut that someone had raised um, or Connecticut Magazine, but I did um, find information on CPTV and NPR, which Denise sent out to you. Um, it's all digital advertising. Um, and if you look at it, the pricing is pretty reasonable. Um, and we have a number of choices to do it. It is um, one that had been suggested in terms of the audience that we would like to be able to reach for some of our things. Um, so I just wanted to go through that. Um, let's see, Denise, can you share screen? Let me go see if I can find it. Um, you should be all set. I know I have to go find the document. Oh, let me see. Um, I'm at my home computer, so I don't know how to do things as easily, <laughs> which is very funny. <clears throat> I actually think I already downloaded it. Um, uh, can you share it? It might be easier for you to share it. Can you guys see it? Oh, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you might want to scroll down. Um, oh, I'm screen sharing. Oh, great. Oh, there we are. Okay. I couldn't find my little arrow thing. So they have, um, if you look at this, under the monthly, they have their WMPR, they have their CPTV, they talk about the sessions, how many sessions they have, how many page views, how many mobile page views. So it does seem like there are more people on the public radio um, site than there are on the CPTV site. I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's more than double in terms of audience size. So if you just, for example, if you look at the CPTV, the display banner, it's 350 a month for a banner that plays 
Um, and you can choose to do every month, you can choose to do a range of them. Um, I think the 625 a week is a little out of our price range. Um, WNPR, their desktop display banner is again, 350 a month. We can choose um, how many months we wanna do. Um, and then the mobile display banner is 750 a month. And again, you can pick and choose your choices on it. Um, so um, just wanted to bring these up. I didn't know what people thought about them, whether we wanted to try it um, and see how it works. This one, the mobile app is only 250 a week, um, which seems really reasonable too. Um, I'm just gonna open it up for discussion. What do people think? Uh, have other thoughts? We have about $8,000. I listen to public radio all day long. I listen to public uh, television only in the evening. So if I'm any indication, I would think that the radio might be a good choice. Although I don't usually listen to uh, Connecticut uh, public radio because it talks all day long. This is actually not on the radio itself. These are all digital ads. Um, <clears throat> except for this one, the 15 second pre-roll audio, which is a thousand a month. Oh. Um, um, someone would have to log on to the app in order to see the right. yep. advertisement. Yeah, but if you go back to the, if you go back to the beginning and what they, what they talk about, you know, under the NPR, they've got, 264,000 page views, meaning that's a lot of people who go and look at their Yeah, pages. it is. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, and they, so there were more people on the public radio than on the public television. That's a lot of people. And if we, <clears throat> even if we did the 350 a month and did six months, mm -hmm. it's not costing us our entire budget. And that's a good way to try it. See yeah. whether it works or not. And I think that's a good audience for us, people that listen to NPR. Mm -hmm. um, Is we this... would just need to have someone create the digital ad, but I don't think that would cost that much. And did I hear someone who was going to ask a question? Yeah, sorry, this is Jesse. Um, uh, is that number how many people that visit their site? It's not how many people would see the ad, right? Right. But if you look at, so if you look at, um, let's go down and find, <coughs> sorry. So we, we have no clue what page they're going to or what, uh, but that's how many people go to it. Um, so here's the, here's the public mobile app where they give you sample pages. So mm. I'm pretty sure there's sticky banners that are available at the top. Okay. Um, and they're saying 63% of downloads are daily active users. At 250, that's 250 a week. Um, if we chose to do a monthly one, um, let me go back up to this public television. <laughs> Sorry. They have so many of these and to go through it was kind of like, oh my God. So their, their mobile display banner ad is $7.50 a month. Right? So as you when you open up the ad, when you open up the mobile app, there's your banner ad. Okay. Um, and you can choose your date ranges that you wanted to do it. So in our case, we'd want to do it for, <clears throat> if you think about it, May and June, right? And then September and October, if we were to book them in advance, right? Yeah, that's helpful to choose when to do it. Yeah. You know, excuse me, I got I to gotta plug in my computer, apparently. I got a little battery. Same with my phone. Someone's getting me a charger. 
So if you lose me for a minute, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. So I'm on the website on the, mm -hmm. I mean, on the app, the Connecticut Public Radio, right? Yeah. And there are several things that you can click on that seem more like news. Where would the advertisement be? If you look at this picture, it looks like it's at the top of the mobile app. Did you just download the mobile app, Judy? I'm so impressed. You're, you're muted. So there is a live link to our website. So it goes to the Elm or the town website, or where, where does the link go? Our link? Right, so if they see our ad, our banner, it would be a single banner for that will run the sing, the whole six months. Or are we changing out the banner as to per activities that are going on in our town? I think you'd want to make it a more generic one. Right. Um, and you'd want the link to probably go to the website and maybe just the calendar, right, of what's going on. Okay. That makes sense? Of course. So again, yeah. I see the top of the of the uh, app, and it looks like Pro Health has an advertisement on it. Yeah, is that where our banner would be? Yes, right. But then there's local news as well, and shows and listen to podcasts, politics, education, health, businesses. You know, I just wonder how easy it is for people to hit on our link. Well, it says it's available on every page. <clears throat> so I think you get to choose which page you want it to go on. Um, and I don't think we would make a firm decision right now, but I think it's worth exploring and saying, okay, where would it be? What months are available um, and figure it out. And I wouldn't do more than four months to try it out. Yeah. Or even two initially. Um, I mean, so seven fifty a month is basically sixteen hundred bucks. I'm gonna do my math is terrible. <laughs> it's fifteen hundred. <clears throat> right. So it's fifteen hundred, and if we did four months, it's three thousand, and we have a budget of eight thousand. So we'd still have um, five thousand left to do advertising somewhere else. So how would we track um, how many pings we're getting from this particular ad? Um, Jesse, can you? Like, do we do Google Google Analytics on this thing or do we, um, I think- I don't think, sorry to interrupt. I don't think we can. I think it would have to be up to them. Something they would, something they would have to uh, track. Right. I mean, it's a question we can ask them. Uh, yes. Yeah. So. I, sometimes it's hard and sometimes uh, companies won't provide you. But nowadays, I think they will provide you with information because they want you to come. They want you to return. They want, you know, the information right. should be accessible to everybody. So. So there's Ho like. Hopefully they yeah, so there is this trick where you create a, a link where it's not a trick. It, you, you create a link that is not our link, but it's a separate link that then forwards it to our website. But so then when it goes through this other link, we can track it. But we have to create that. Do you know what I'm saying, Jess? Um, I could talk to you offline about that. Yeah. Um, I, I I've heard about it before, but I'm not sure um, if it's something 
I don't know how you might be talking about something new, but uh, I've heard of stuff like that, but that's something I thought they would have to do because the, because the code or whatever would have to be entered into their back end of their site. Yeah. I think. I'm not sure, though. Um, I, I think it'd be valuable, um, Chris, if we could figure out how many people we're getting from this particular advertising effort. Yep. Right. No, I agree. I mean, it's kind of like try it and see whether it makes sense or not. Um, but we have we have spent more than this on other advertising, and we've never were really sure whether it did us any good or not. Mm. Um, so if we can figure out a way to track it, or they can say how many people clicked on the clicked on the ad, that would give us a better idea. Mm. Um, but. <clears throat> I know we're going to lose a couple of people in a couple of minutes. I'd be interested in um, if we could get a motion to at least explore this and I, whether it's two months or four months um, pending, you know, how do we track the information, what months are available um, and kind of get that information and bring it back and go for an electronic vote so we don't have to wait till the end of March before we place it, if we can get that information in the next week or so, then we can get it in the work sooner rather than later. I make a motion that we, um, that we research the information on placing an ad and then come back to it in the as soon as possible to make a decision. Do you wanna talk about a Second. Sure, we can talk about it now. <laughs> I, I know I don't get like a, I get a vote here or anything, but um, I would I would say go for it. Um, it's the correct uh, genre of people, the exact group of people we're looking for, um, probably the people that follow this app and things like that. And I don't see why it would be any harm trying it out. Um, and then hopefully, I mean, only if they, you know, accept you know, doing it at certain times and, and if we find out we can track uh, things and the information and how many people are following or whatnot, um, that would be great. Right. That's just I'm my sure, suggestion. I'm sure as a new account, they would want to help us to find out all those things. Right. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Kate, are you okay with um, research placing an ad on um, NPR's uh, digital sites for up to four months? Yes. Okay. Um, and that final information will be distributed electronically? Yes. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Betty. And do we have further discussion? Okay. I think we need more information. <laughs> no, I agree. It's more that it's researching placing and we'll distribute it electronically. I just want to get it moving. So, um, okay. So final decision is pending the results of the research. Um, and final decision would be an electronic vote. So it's not tonight, Judy. Does that make you more comfortable? No, I know it. I know it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye or? Aye. Okay. Aye. Do we have any opposed? Okay, motion passes. All right, Jill and uh, Amy, if we lose you, we're good. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, go back. <clears throat> okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Um, if someone wants to research Connecticut Magazine or Better Connecticut, which I think is a television show, isn't it? Yes. They actually have a new name. I don't know what it is. Is that Scott Haney's show? 
It's Scott Great Haney, Haney Connecticut. Yeah. yeah, what's it called now? Great Day, Connecticut. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Great Day, Connecticut. Yeah, they changed it. I don't know why, but they did. Okay. Uh, somebody want to call and talk and see what I see what they do for advertising. The problem is television is so outrageous, expensive usually. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's out of our budget. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I do think Connecticut Magazine, though, we should have a placement in that. <clears throat> I get the magazine. I should just look at it and see who to call for the advertising. No, if you make donations to public broadcasting, you get the right. magazine delivered to your house. And it's right. several times a year. It's Every colorful. Month. Huh? Every, Every month. month. Okay. Yeah, what it was said was I should look at my magazine to see who to, who to talk to to see what the pricing is. Oh, yeah, right, right. <clears throat> so, um, okay. Um, Denise, if you could add that to your list of things to do, that would be great. I will see if I could do it, but I, am, I have been totally slammed at work lately. So um, we'll see how that goes. Okay. All right, back up to open business. Um, old business. So cultural district designation, Joya, has been working diligently over the last since the last meeting. Um, she basically has a, a draft together. Uh, Amy, Jill, and I were in a meeting with her just before this meeting. Um, we are going to basically be working on updating a few of it and then reviewing the asset list at the stakeholder meeting um, and then doing final editing so that by, Joy, would you say at the March meeting we'll have a final product before ready for submission for this commission to review and approve? Sure. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. So we're looking at um, end of March submitting it. Um, if it's ready earlier, we may send it out earlier, but uh, the council has already approved it. It's really just making sure all the questions have been answered and the pieces put together. Uh, the grant award for those who didn't see the press release, um, the city of Hartford, Riverfront, Recapture and a town of Weathersfield got one of the planning grants from deep to do the route from Hartford into Weathersfield, the planning route. We had submitted a letter of support and Peter had been working with the city and Riverfront on the application. Uh, so we had submitted a letter of support in October for that. So just wanted to let you know that yes, we got the funding. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and the goal of that was to um, eventually include it to go all the way down to Rocky Hill. Um, so just another um, great use where we're creating a multi-use walking, biking, hiking trail um, so that it ties everything in together. So just wanted to let everyone know on that. Um, and I'm not sure who in the town is going to be working on that. Denise, would that be engineering? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, EV charging station. I'm sorry. Um, Chris, Chris, yeah. um, so this is Betty. Um, as far as that trail goes, I am wondering if I could say something about the trail that goes around Cove Park. Um, we hiked it the other day, yesterday, and it needs a lot of work. The trail needs a lot of work that goes down Cove Park around that um, gravel road around the park where they cut down those trees around the um, warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, that whole area could use a lot of sprucing up and clearing of invasives. And um, I don't know if they're planning on digging out those trees that they cut down, the ash that's full of ash borer insect because when spring comes around those roots if they don't dig them up will send out shoots mm -hmm. so I, I maybe they're planning on doing that carol do you know they're doing that carol bruce i'm not gonna know that no 
Um, I know that the um, Village Improvement is hoping to plant a tree there for Arbor Day. Um, but we could also um, set aside some monies to plant trees that are, um, that like wet roots, like river birches. I um, think that the town is planning to plant new trees because there was a lot of questions on, what is it, what's up Weathersfield or something about um, how awful it was that they cut down all the trees. But um, somebody said, somebody in the know said that they will be planting um, trees that would be appropriate there. Okay, so there is some budget somewhere for that already. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Right, it's just, so the rest of it, if you just walk it, you'll see that a lot of that gravel, that gray gravel, which is so nice to walk in, has, is washing down into the coast. Yes. Right, yeah. So. yeah. so Denise, do we know what town department is responsible for that trail maintenance? Is it Sally's department? It physical services, yeah. So it's physical services. So can you just pass on from the commission that, um, if we could get a quick update from her on what their plans are with that section of the trail. It is- Yeah, I can, I can talk to her about um, whether or not tree planting is planned and um, upcoming maintenance schedule. Now, are they going to be putting uh, the stone or asphalt, whatever, behind the, uh, um, the barn because or the warehouse, because when you ride a bike or walk along there, you're walking on grass basically, and it keeps eroding and eventually it'll be mud. And that connecting to, is it Warner Play, Warner Street or whatever the next, Hanmer Street, I guess. Yeah, Hanmer Street. Yeah, that needs to be uh, addressed because it's difficult to bike on. It's probably difficult to walk on too. And it's gonna be a mess very shortly. So when you say the behind, I'm not sure which, are you talking Cove side or the other side? The other side. Well, it connects the two of them. Um, the trail <laughs> ends at Hanmer Street and then people walk uh, further along behind the warehouse that connects with the road to the Cove. Yeah. E east um, side. So the problem is, I don't know if that's town property or if that's the historical society. Interesting. Well, I, I would think both would like to have it improved. <laughs> well, I'm also wondering if the historical society doesn't want a trail there and wants the grass. So it's a question to ask Amy or Jill. Oh. Do you know what okay. I mean? Yeah, yeah. I didn't think that the historical society owned that building. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm never quite sure of the um, ownership. ownership of those things. Yeah. I don't but if know we're if promoting, things. if we're promoting trails going into Weathersfield, that should be, I mean, that's a real number one area that should be. Right. Yep. So I think that's part of that. So Denise, um, maybe when you talk to Sally, and we get the update on that trail and the maintenance schedule. Can you just ask her if the town owns the land that the Cove Warehouse sits on? That would make it easier. Isn't it the Cove Warehouse that the Historical Society rents from the town with the red onions? That's right. So that's why I'm saying Sally would know whether the town yeah. owns the land or not. And you know, the, there the is an does. area. I'm sorry. There is an area where there's a question whether you're on somebody's private property. Or right. on town property, yeah. <laughs> right. So, Denise, you were going to say? So, the structure is on town property. Okay. All right. So, we'll include that as part of the update. Uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, moving on. Uh, EV charging station, any quick updates, Denise? If you don't have any, it's fine. I know it's kind of that floating um, out. <clears throat> There, there have been conversations about adding it into the request. Um, so I, um, I, I did have a conversation with the manager after our last meeting. Um, I will have to circle back with her for an update on that. Do you want me to send her an email? Um, that sure, that would be fantastic. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and certified local government, did we get any more information from Kim and or the district? Uh, Kim and I did have a conversation in the middle of last week and um, she is, she got me the majority of what, uh, what we're still looking for. Um, so it probably, um, it would, it would be great to maybe set up just a, um, a meeting on the side if anybody else is interested in, in having that discussion with her probably for about an hour just to just to get the final preparation together. Okay. Um, all right, can, um, since I'm the one who's been working on that the most, um, do you want to send a date out for like the first or second week of March? Yeah, I, I can, I'll touch base with her tomorrow morning and see what's good. I'll get a few dates from her and coordinate with you. Okay. All right. Um, and then if you don't mind, just send it out to anybody else. If they're interested, they can sit in on it. Absolutely. Okay. And while you're talking, just keep going. Visitor Mount Heritage Way update. Um. We're still, we can't really do the installation because of weather. That's right. right. Um, I, I anticipate, you know, we're probably still about a month out. Okay. Okay. All right, any other old business? Okay. <clears throat> Let's just go right down. Um, so Amy and Joe gave their update. Betty, you're up. I keep switching the order then. Thank you. <laughs> Makes it easier for people because you know. Why not? Um, you know, at the end of the meeting, you're getting pushed along and you didn't get your chance, so. You're um, up. Yeah, so um, should I start with February? Yeah, we'll do February. So. <laughs> Um, things are starting back up. People are coming back in, signing up for classes and workshops. In fact, we have a landscape painting workshop this weekend. It's supposed to start Friday, but I don't know what the weather foretails. We have someone coming up from Virginia to do this one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I pointed her in the direction of a, a Airbnb on Main Street. So um, let's see what else. We have um, St. Patrick's Day, concert on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th, with Gene Freeman of the Irish Music Academy and um, one of her buddies, that, Ring Rose, yes. So it's a Freeman Ring Rose concert at seven o'clock at the Academy with a suggested donation. Um, you're welcome to come. It's a um, straight out wonderful concert. Um, and then we have a very, very fun, the following week, a very fun um, art auction, which we're auctioning off uh, artwork from our students and instructors, as well as uh, fun things like gift certificates and baskets of wine and um, other things like that. So um, that's, uh, it's a virtual, auction so we will have the um the link on our website probably in, in a week or so when we load all the items up there'll be about 30 items it's a fundraiser um the following week we have a portrait drawing workshop um april 31st to april uh no no i'm sorry march 31st to april 2nd um oh and fun fun um in April, we had a very fun um, Valentine's card making workshop. And we're gonna continue it, not with Valentine's of course, but uh, it's a one day, two hour, family oriented, mother, daughter, sister, cousin, you know, anything. Um, a workshop, two hour workshop in card making. Um, and th these are like birthday cards, Easter cards, you know, whatever, religion you are um you make it yourself but we put the kits together so you get all the elements and it's just a fun thing to do um it's two hours on uh the ninth in the afternoon saturday the ninth 
And we also have a, at the end of the month in April, we have a plein air watercolor workshop where um, you come bring a chair. No, it's three hours. Bring a chair on the 30th and our instructor will show you how to paint outdoors. She supplies everything, the board, the paints, the brushes, the pens, and she shows you how to capture what you see. And you can use this skill anywhere when you are outside on your trips, in your backyard. So that'll be fun. It's all, it'll be on our website shortly. That's it. Okay. All right, we don't have anybody from the shopkeepers tonight, correct? Uh, all right. So Judy, you are out of BDIC. You're on mute. Most of our Most of our discussions over the past couple of meetings um, have been about uh, the ARPA funding. So um, we tonight, actually, at the uh, town council meeting, um, the recommendations are going to be made uh, for what to ask for, for in the uh, amount of money that we are going to be getting from the federal government. And it's $225,000. I'm hoping I'm not divulging secrets here. Denise, <laughs> am I talking about state secrets if I tell everybody what we're going to be using it for? No, you can discuss the request. Okay. So um, the uh, there are two different scenarios, but one requests more money than the other. So I'm just going to talk about the most, uh, the more money. Uh, a good portion of it would go to facade improvement um, program. Um, part of it would go a, a much smaller amount to communications manager for the town for our benefit. Um, vertical banners in the uh, historic district and actually not just in the historic district, but along um, the uh, Berlin Turnpike and the Celestine Highway as well to advertise for um, Weathersfield. And, you know, those are the ones that go on the lamp poles. Mm -hmm. Um, video and marketing, there's a proposal to take a chunk of the money to go towards video and marketing um, of, old, of Weathersfield in general. Um, trash cans for Main Street, because uh, people have been complaining, I guess, that after um, uh, the events, you know, there's, there's no place to throw trash away. So they want to get some more of the um, metal cans that can be emptied. Then there's one other interesting thing that we're going to be pursuing, I believe, and that's called community cards. And it would mean that people could purchase a, a gift card, and it's a Visa card, I believe, um, to be used in Weathersfield at a designated uh, stores or restaurants or whatever. And say they buy a $50 card. Um, I believe you get an additional $25 when you use it. Um, and there's all kinds of advertising that's possible on the cards and uh, people can order them online and then use them in, as I say, designated Weathersfield businesses. So those are the, the highlighted areas for what we wanna um, ask for. Um, I do think the vertical banners are something that should be discussed, especially in Old Weathers Field. Are you okay bringing that up at the stakeholders meeting? Because I can see a lot of opposition to those. Yeah, and I. Well, it doesn't have to be limited to Old Weathers Field either. It could be along the Silas Dean. <clears throat> no, I know. I'm just saying, but for Old Weathers Field, I can see a lot of opposition. Why? Why would people be opposed to it? Well, it doesn't fit in with the with the oh, with the historic <laughs> district. Yeah, with the historic okay. district. Yeah. Okay. So maybe they would just go on the main uh, main drags. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's all. Okay. All right. So it's going to council tonight. Because oh, it didn't. Yes. Last night. It's a virtual meeting um, tonight. Yeah. Okay. 
So any signs in the historic district would require um, approval from that commission um, before any installation. And then throughout the other areas of town, uh, the design review advisory committee would review and approve any proposed. So um, they're making the funding request. And then if, if the funding is approved, we would go um, you know, forward with uh, getting a, a rendering of what we thought it, it might look like. Yeah. I, I think that's really the, the highlight of what we've been talking about at our meetings. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Uh, Jess, you're on mute. <laughs> um, I pretty much got a lot of information tonight that I needed. Um, I <clears throat> am wondering if uh, Web Dean Stevens have has any March uh, things going on. Um, I, I, I saw some virtual things going on, like popping up this month. I didn't know if March has anything. Uh, I would need that. Uh, if they do, I would need that. Hopefully, I would like it before Friday, but you could give it to me before the 28th. Otherwise, it doesn't make it out to uh, the newsletter. OK. Um, uh, Let's see, uh, I made, uh, so last year, uh, I made a winter and weathers field video for YouTube and it, it became uh, extremely popular and was really, uh, uh, people liked it. Uh, and so this year I decided to do uh, winter and weathers field part two. Um, I just actually let it out, uh, just uh, posted it, I think yesterday and it's already got uh, like 600 something views and it's hitting up there close to the popularity of the first one. Uh, I suggest checking it out. This one, I do go inside the, the, um, uh, uh, the Silas, Silas Robbins uh, bed and breakfast. And I do like a little, like go around a little bit. And um, uh, that's about it for that. Um, uh, our social media shut up our a real lot uh, for January, which is very rare. Uh, what happened was I did a uh, post uh, uh, ad. Facebook uh, has changed their business um, platform to metadata. So um, I went through the norms of what I regularly do to set up uh, an ad. And what I thought was setting up for a $20 ad was setting up for a $20 a day ad. So um, by the time I noticed what was going on, I think we made it to $170. So um, for the rest of the year, I'll probably have to keep my eye on and uh, pick and kind of choose what I want to uh, advertise about. Um, <laughs> our budget for, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the budget or not, but uh, this is back, uh, uh, me and Peter uh, set the ad limit to 500. Yeah. Um, I, can't go, I can't go above that. Um, I've actually never made it close to that. Um, I think after a year, um, around 300, 350. So I, I probably used a good half in like a month. Um, the only disappointing part about that is, is uh, the price. You would think I, you would get a little more for what I actually got, I, mean, I don't have the statistics with me. I mean, it shot up a lot, but I I would think it would be for the price paid, it would be a lot higher mm -hmm. than it was. Um, and believe me, that will never happen again. Um, that was pretty ridiculous. So I do apologize for that. So since the pricing seems to have gone up, maybe we should <clears throat> just think about specifically what things we want to boost or what things we want to actually pay for ads. 
so that those limited dollars are spent better. And it'd be interesting if they can get to the stats, what day of the week seems to have worked better. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I can check that out. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they have that type of data. Um, I think for me out here out uh, for this year, I'll have to stick to uh, events. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I usually do um, holidays on Maine. I, you know, if, right. if the bike bike things happening again, and then you know, um, scarecrows. Uh, you know, the simple things, and then twenty dollars there, twenty dollars. You know, that's what sixty dollars mm -hmm. altogether. Right. It's really not that bad. So. Okay. Um, but we did, we, uh, we had such a boost that it, it's like pushing over into, it pushed over into February and um, people are really, really following and um, getting a lot more likes right now. Uh, <laughs> even after the ads, you know, long, long gone. Right. Um, I'm just glad I caught it when I, when it was, because it would have been, because so, what it is, uh, so I choose a dollar a day. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna spend twenty dollars for twenty days, and that's the ad I'll I'll do. Instead, it was twenty dollars per day, so that would have been twenty dollars for twenty days. So that would have been I don't know what's that four hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay. I caught it like caught it midway maybe, you know. <laughs> so. Good. And I'm not and I'm not joking when I say it was. It, they literally had the same setup as they do uh, in the past, but in the corner, it just said per day instead of instead of uh, what you want to spend on it. That was the only difference. I even I sent them an email. I sent them a bunch of stuff. I don't I don't think there's I don't think they're getting back. Anymore. Deceptive advertising. Yeah, <laughs> purposeful <laughs> placement. Yes, <laughs> right. That, no, it, under for hundred percent. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, how, it's kind of like I, they changed their pricing, but did they actually send a specific email to you saying, hey, here's a new pricing structure? Right. Yeah. right. To keep track. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. And, and, and the funny thing was, I, I was on uh, a week later, I was on another person's computer, and sometimes they don't change things over all the way. Mm -hmm. on everybody's you know they, it's not updated on their computer and I was going through it and I looked at how the, the pricing was it was the same exact way in the past and I was like see there it is it's just, I was like I was right like it's just it's right there mm -hmm. per, it, they, they they just changed it to per per day and, and that was that was it <laughs> I think that's the difference between if you're considered a business or an individual yeah, yeah, so, maybe. Okay, all right. Uh, just because we're getting close to time, you all said Jesse. Anything else we should know? Um, I I don't think so. I think I have. I did have. I thought some art questions, but every but the, all the art questions were uh, answered. And I think, I think I have everything. So. Okay. Very good. Last but not least, Kate, you're up. Okay. Um, we have, as Jesse mentioned, we're having a series of uh, afternoon lectures. So they're at th uh, 1230 through Zoom. Um, our next one is this week. It's about Yorktown. Uh, and all of them are listed on our website. And I believe they're coming up on Facebook as well. So I won't go through every single one of them. But um, the thing that I'm most excited about, I forgot to write down the actual date for, um, I believe it's the week of St. Patrick's Day on that Friday, but we are doing a dinner um, with this woman who's amazing and she's gonna come in, decorate the whole uh, Waterman room and it's going to be a Caribbean based menu. Um, and then we are bringing out artifacts that relate to the Caribbean trade and um, Rich, our curator, will be talking about the different items. So like we have a ledger book, um, we have a sea chest, things like that that are gonna be talked about. Um, and it's like a, a 
four courses, I believe, with uh, wine pairings or alcohol pairings with it. It's going to go live on our um, Facebook, I believe, on Friday. But Jesse, I will get you. I will have them send you all the information tomorrow so that you have that. And then um, it's it's a ways yet, but Tags and Treasures is making its return this year after having to skip for COVID. So if you're a tag sailor, um, this is going to be the mega Tags and Treasures because they had to cancel the last one. And the ladies have been bringing things anyway. So we're going to basically have two Tags and Treasures worth of stuff. So um, definitely don't want to miss that. So that's uh, April... Um, Eight, well, nine and ten, basically. Eighth will be the preview invitation thing. And um, so that's that's about it. Otherwise, we're all doing good. Oh, and the new um, the new exhibit that'll be opening up when we open in, in the spring will be on our archaeology. So that's going to be pretty exciting. I'll get you more information when I have it. But we're, we're really excited about that. Great. Um, Joy, I forgot um, to put on the agenda. Um, do you have any updates on the students working on videos? And I know you had shared the information and like Melinda was giving it to the shopkeepers. Do you know if any of the businesses took advantage of that? We have three videos they submitted. One was for Indulge by Palazzo. Uh, one was um, Griffin Landscaping. And Heartseed was the third one. And so I um, actually was going to get together as my time freed up a little with Jesse. Uh, I wanted to show them to him and help us. Look. One is pretty well done. I think we could put it on the site. Um, the Heartseed one, the, the intro is beautiful. The way they did it, the interview needs is a little fuzzy. So I'm not sure if we can clear up the voice on it. And then um, who was the, the Griffin landscaping one is, is pretty good too. Um, but I wanted to run them by Jesse and I haven't had an opportunity to do that. I received them from the teacher uh, about a week ago or so, I wanna say. We waited for all midterm exams to be done and everything, so. All right, is, good. is this yeah. Great Elm stuff or Historic Waters here? Um, they could go both. both. I mean, I think Heart C definitely would go on historic. Um, I don't know. We can decide how we want to do them. We can have links in various places, I think, to showcase. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and then last item is stakeholders meeting is scheduled for the 4th of March. Um, so Denise sent out invites yesterday. Last week, she sent them out sometime quite recently. <laughs> um, so if you can make it, that would be great. It's a virtual. Um, one of the things we're doing, which I had said earlier, was reviewing uh, the asset list. Um, but also, are there any opportunities in terms of what people have on their schedules for um, building on them or tagging? Uh, tag along events that tie things together. Again, it goes back to if someone's coming for an art academy card workshop, maybe the shopkeepers are doing something else. So it gives more opportunity for people to um, visit different parts of the community um, and take advantage of the visitors that are already coming in. So, okay. All right, any other business? Okay. Hearing none, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Okay. Great. Uh, motion accepted. All right. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, so the next meeting will be last Tuesday in March. And otherwise, I'll see a lot of you at the stakeholders meeting. Okay. Bye, everyone. Stay dry. Bye. Nice Thank to meet you guys. You Thanks, Adrian. Bye bye. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah. Bye bye. Denise, I may have a question. <laughs> I may have a question or two. If so, I'll give you an email or a call. Either one. Whatever okay. is good for you. Yep. I'm All sorry right. I couldn't Sounds get a hold of you before the meeting, but yeah. Oh, 
that's okay. All right, thank you. I hope you have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.